Ambassador Puri to address the audience and give his keynote address. I thought that it's very natural that we are meeting at Microsoft. I'm sure most of you would have figured out why I said so. But you know, I'm very proud that uh, the current Chief Executive Officer is a homegrown Indian, schooled out there, the father was a government official like me, and we are very happy and proud that we are therefore on Microsoft soil here in Brussels. So thank you very much for this choice to Microsoft. Of course, I'm very delighted to say see TCS and all the others uh, here. Thank you very much for this. Um, Manoj, if you will allow me first to say a few words of welcome to the European Union, especially uh, the Director General, who's in charge of IT services and connectivity, uh, Mr. Robert Mendia. Today is a day when the European Commissioners meet in what is called the Collegium meeting. Some of the biggest decisions get taken out there, and so therefore for the Director General to have found time is, I think, a commitment on his part, of course, to the digital world as such, but also in terms of cooperation and collaboration with India. We are particularly uh, grateful to you, sir, for that. Friends, much has been mentioned here about India and the European Union. I think it goes without saying that all of us know that we are the two largest democracies in the world. But let me bring us down to today's event. The front page of India's newspapers today basically carry the story of consultations being carried out by the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India on net neutrality. It's all over the place. I don't know how many 3.5 million emails have landed there, including from some of my colleagues sitting here, saying we must have net neutrality. And India's equivalent of Amazon has had to walk back from talking to a telecom provider. Please see how it works out. Why did I say that? Because when I woke up in the morning today and I opened the Financial Times, what is the front page news out there? It's about the European Union again trying to enforce rules in the digital sphere, rules which I believe the way they structure it favor the common man, the common woman, and trying to ensure that there is a kind of neutrality. This is in the case of Google. Now, how this case will work out, what happens, etc. I'm only reading the newspapers. I don't know if the Director General is privy to anything else. It's a, it's a techno-legal case, but I would imagine that much of it goes down to this particular issue of neutrality, quote and unquote, in various ways. Why, why does this happen? Of course, it's a coincidence that these two events happened on the same day. So why does it happen? To my mind, it happens fundamentally because we are democracies, and we are social democracies. We are wedded towards the entire concept that democracy means benefit for all our population, for people across our countries, across our membership, we are the union, across all citizenship of India. And therefore, it becomes the paramount necessity of the government to ensure that this particular medium, which is, as someone said, one of the brightest, and as the minister said, one of the greatest inventions of mankind, which has the potential for changing the way we do things, changing the way we live life, changing the quality of life for all of us, that we ensure that its benefit reached across to everyone and that nobody is disadvantaged. Advantage perhaps might be a different matter, but nobody is disadvantaged and everybody has the same benefits and access to it. That's particularly important. This for me is the essence of what India aims to do. Last year, there were elections in both India and in the European Union. In May last year, just as your elections were being completed here, Prime Minister Narendra Modi led his political party, the BJP, and the country to a spectacular election victory. After 30 years, a political party has got an absolute majority in our House of Commons equivalent, the Lok Sabha, by itself. Why did people do that? In my opinion, it was quite clear. People voted, of course, for hope and aspiration, but they voted for a proven track record of achievement of somebody who had done it. 13 years as Chief Minister of Gujarat, there were developments to be seen on the ground which people said they wanted replicated across India. So when you looked at a map of India, 
of where the yeah. Bharatiya Janata Party did well, you would see the entire map was colored with their colors. And that happened because people believed. And they believed because there was a proven track. Now, I will draw your attention to two of the Prime Minister's major initiatives, initiatives in which the European Union for us should play a critical role. One, of course, is Make in India. We are the world's second largest country. We are the third largest economy in purchasing power terms. We're likely to grow on all of them. The Prime Minister has often mentioned demography. We are the world's largest young country, growing. Demand is but obvious, it flows from this. In this economy of ours, it was absolutely imperative that manufacturing is given a key place and is made an anchor to the way we can grow our economy. It's necessary for no other reason but simply to have enough jobs and employability for the millions of young people who join the workforce in India. It has economic consequences, it also has social consequences. So the Prime Minister has laid huge and immense effort on promoting the Make in India initiative as a leading flagship program of the government. Indeed, the recent visit of the Prime Minister just a few days back, first in France, then in Germany, has basically sought to highlight and give a tremendous push in terms of European interaction with the Make in India initiative of the government. And we count on the European Union support member states, and all of you in your individual and in your corporate uh, capacities in this. And the second is digital India. The two are also dovetailed. And why do I say, say digital India? You heard our minister speak about the various plans. Coming from India, which has the population of 1.2 billion, all numbers sound huge and massive. And so, even though the European Union is, in a sense, the third largest at some 500 odd million people, your numbers are not in the same scale as our numbers. But then, our needs are that much larger. You start from a development status, a development position, where so many things have already been achieved over a period of time. In our case, the unmet demand is simply tremendous and huge, and needs to be protected. <coughs> And so the minister mentioned digital India and what, what is it that we wish to do. For me, the most important element of digital India is, of course, its infrastructure and all that else which is being planned. But what it would do to empower the people of India. It would provide, I have little doubt, immense amounts of economic empowerment. The ability to reach across, the ability to sit in a village in India and have hopefully access to the best and brightest anywhere in the world. The ability to tap into your resources, the good ideas that you all have sitting here in Europe, ideas in other parts of India, certainly this can leverage business, this can leverage economics. But I have no doubt that what it would do in terms of empowerment, self-empowerment, social empowerment for people would be of an absolutely tremendous order. So when Mr. Ladwa mentioned his own experiences with the Prime Minister starting 20 years back, and then talking about how he leveraged what the digital technology is able to do, reach out to a number of people, what does he essentially talk about? He talks about the fact that each of these things tend to empower the individual, even where he or she is. It gives them the chance to bring the world to them. It gives them a chance to bring themselves to the world. Digital technology, social media, there are revolutionary kind of changes that we've seen in our time. We are seeing them even today as we speak. Our newspapers invariably tend to talk about what has been happening in the digital space. We see it all around. We see elections. This has become a well-perfected art, I should say, as far as elections is concerned. But we see it in marketing. We see it all around. And indeed, the issue of net neutrality would not have been as important if it wasn't for the fact that penetration is growing and growing hugely, and secondly, that it is becoming uh, the most important medium for us to turn back and how we interact with it. Indeed, without going into this entire subject matter of internet governance, this tends to be an area 
in which our country, our government tends to have a certain world view. And others from different parts of the world, and I dare say sometimes our friends from the European Union, perhaps tend to bring a different perspective to the world, the United States certainly does. But these are all issues at which we need to sit down and see what we can do about it. One note, before I close, I want to draw attention to the ongoing cooperation and what we have achieved in the area of digital cooperation with the European Union. Our trade in services was somewhere in the order of about the 13 billion euros in 2006. It has now grown to about 23 billion euros the figure of 2013, maybe it's grown a little bit more since then. Essentially, most of it is cooperation in the digital age. We are very proud to see Indian corporations here working in every different sphere that you can think of, whether it is spreading telecom, whether it's banking services, whether it's, of course, accounting, whether it's design, whether it's medical IT. We're equally happy to see European ideas European conceptualization, innovation, their own companies hugely present in India. Of course, several of them have been present for decades, and they continue to be the largest player. But that's our advantage. We happen to have this link, and this is a link that we should certainly try and see where we can take it forward. We also have institutional mechanisms of conversation, interaction, and cooperation with the European Union. We have a joint uh, working group on ICT. Uh, it meets regularly. In fact, it met several months back here in, in Brussels. It allows us to cooperate and speak about a large number of these particular issues, in particular global issues, and issues which are of a bilateral policy implication between the two. But I want to use this opportunity to say that India is hugely open for cooperation in the digital area hugely open for cooperation in the manufacturing area. It's a growing, and indeed the IMF recent uh, report, released only yesterday, says that we are going to be the fastest growing economy in the world. What does it mean for the European Union, which has the essential advantage of an old relationship with India? It gives you the opportunity of having a fast movement, a fa fast track, first mover advantage. I would call upon you to take advantage of this. You have Indian corporates sitting here. You have the opportunities to go to India. My mission and I would, of course, be very happy to assist. We'd like to try and see what can we do to build actual collaborations between European Union mm -hmm. entities and its private sector companies with those in India. We have a vested interest in this. But I must say, I think this is one area as we progress in India, we will also be able to cooperate and collaborate and aid and assist, if you don't mind my using these expressions, even the European Union with your avowed and massive goal of a digital single market. Indeed, friends, as the year unfolded, there were a large number of receptions in and around Brussels where eminent speakers got up and you know made prognosis about what should be done in Europe in the coming year. Several obviously mentioned the horrendous acts which had just happened in, pa in Paris. Several mentioned the north-south divide which people tend to talk about in terms of the bailouts and the Greek exit and so on and so forth. But I was very happy to note it, to note that at least several speakers said that perhaps the most important thing for the future of Europe is the creation of the single digital single market and its implications for bringing everyone together. Mr. Director General, I believe you will be soon on to speak here. And all I would say is that as a small single consumer, I very much look forward to it. I think this is one of the areas where perhaps we have some templates. We have <laughs> internet access at some of the best prices in the world. Uh, my government has to reimburse me fairly well to be able to afford that kind of accessibility here. Yeah? I want to wish you and this interaction all the very best. Thank you very much.